Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to look at Spring Boot HTTP interface, and we're going to see how we can uh, how we can handle when we get some errors. There were a lot of questions actually in uh, on the channel um, in the comments. There were some questions about how can we handle and how can we do some error handling in these different situations when we're using the new HTTP interfaces feature from Spring Boot, and it, it arrived with Spring Six. Um, if you're not familiar with, uh, with with Spring Boot and HTTP interfaces, then please watch the other video that I made about uh, about the interfaces. Uh, shortly said, I can tell tell you shortly that that uh, of course when when we have a um, when we have our own API, when we have an API that we want to define, then we are using the REST controller with Spring Boot. So the, then we have the REST controller, and we have these cool annotations that actually specify our endpoint, and it actually. It just seems so uh, clean and fresh, right? So um, the problem is that when we have to call other uh, other APIs out in the world, then we usually would use the REST template, which is quite ugly and it's not made in the in, in, in the same style as these uh, declarations right here and these annotations right here. Um, so uh, so that is actually a solution to that, and that is actually to use the HTTP interface. So that means that you can just create an interface. Then you can um, then you can annotate the whole interface with with something like HTTP exchange, and then you can do like this. You can actually create uh, different. Uh, you have the HTTP method right here. You have the get right here. You have the URL endpoint right here. What you don't have, you don't have the base URL. So this means that you can also use this setup. You can use the HTTP interfaces against different uh, against different environments because you are the only thing that would actually change between the environments are there uh, is the base URL, so that means that then you will just set a new base URL for each of these. You can use HTTP exchange, you can also use GET or POST exchange or PUT exchange for that matter. So there are different ways of actually defining these uh, requests that you want to, to make right here. Um, the implementation is then created in with a, a configuration like this. You will create one bean right here, which is the spaceship client. Look, that is the interface, space, uh, spaceship client is the interface. And here we create the, 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 the interface by setting a, ba a base URL. We can also set something that we want to have uh, per default, like a default header. Uh, we want we don't want to do that in this demonstration right here, but you can do that if you want to. Then you can, then in, then, yeah, then you round it all off with actually creating a new client with the fa factory right here, with the HTTP service proxy factory. Um, and then then you actually have your then you have your client. So then you have your client. Then you don't have to have this octi REST template code where you have to define where you have to put the endpoint and all of that. And maybe you would actually have the REST template to uh, um, use the same in, uh, the same API multiple places. And then you then then of course then when you refactor, then you have, then you would have to actually remember to change all of these endpoints the the, the yeah the in in, in separate uh, in multiple places. And that is, of course, not good. So the, right now, the only place that we have the base URL is right here. And of course, this should be a property, you know, property file, but I've not done that uh, yet. So uh, yeah, so that that is just how it is. So we have the client configuration right here, and it's just any any class with a, a configuration on top. And then you can actually create your bean, which is this case, in this case, is a spaceship client. Our client has a lot of methods, and I've added some more methods since the last time that we uh, that since I made the first video about HTTP interfaces, I've made a bad request. I've made made a bad bad request uh, client call, and of course I have a a, a service. I also have a uh, a REST service endpoint that matches this. And the same right here, I have an internal server error right here, and then we have the ships with internal server error right here. So we have two we have two of these requests right here. And if you go look and at the, at the backend and see how they're defined. Then we can actually see that these will actually always return the the bad request will always return the bad request, which is HTTP code four hundred. And it will always return in the body an empty list of spaceships. You can always, even though that you have a bad request or something that uh, that's different than two hundred, a HTTP code that is different than two hundred, then you can still add something in the body. You just do, you just do it like this. So you, you write this response entity and then whatever error that you have, and then dot body and then you can set your body after that. The same with internal server error right here. Uh, we always return an internal server error um, and then we just again we uh, we return a, a an empty uh, list of spaceships. 
So that is uh, that is what we want to, to 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 run, and I've created this cool test right here that can actually show us all of all of the stuff. First of all, it could be nice to actually see that we can uh, call the the, the spaceships uh, just like we did the last time, where we have the security header right here, where I'm I have uh, enabled security. This means that all of our um, all of our, our, our HTTP client calls they actually have the. Uh, they actually have the authorization header on top right here. So that means that we always have this uh, basic auth authentication header right here. If you're using JWT, the approach is the same. I'll make a separate video where we can actually, where I will show you the JWT approach. But it, as you probably have, have, have guessed, it is the same header key authorization. It's just another value when you use JWT. But I'll, I'll make a video on it anyway. So that means that we have uh, authorization right here, and then we have this silly uh, ship with header right here, where we have a, a header uh, with the key named Mike, and then we have some kind of value right here. This is just to, this this was just to show that we can actually have multiple headers. You can have your own headers that you add to your requests right now. Let us jump back to the spaceship controller test right here, and first of all, I'm just going to press play without any. Uh, yeah, without, without stopping the test. So it's just so we can see that we can actually run something. We have the ship's foot header. We have a green marking right here. So that is that, so it, it looks like it actually works. And we could also print out the ships actually. So we get these ships right here. Then we can say for each. And then we can say system, uh, system out, system out, print line like this. This is a method reference. So now I'm going to print out all of the spaceships. It's just so we can see that the REST endpoint actually works, and we have some spaceships if we if if we if, if we do it right. So here we have the spaceships. Oh, they were here in the bottom. Just go in the bottom right here. It is big, uh, yeah. The reason why we cannot see the spaceships right. Oh, they're here, right? Here they are. Here the spaceships are. Yeah, the spaceships name Hawk, Eagle Swan, and the captain is Mike, Pauline O'Brien, and few lifts. Yeah, some values, destination moon, Jupiter Mars. So that, that's fine, but that is not what we want to focus on. We want to focus on the error examples. So, first of all, how do we handle the error with the with, with HTTP client? You catch two things. You have to catch web client request exception. Web client request exception. And the web client response exception. If you call something that does not exist, that means that if the URL does not exist, then you would get a, a, a web client um, request exception, a web client ex a request exception. That is when you call something, if you call some kind of, if you have a base URL that does not exist, and maybe your server is not up and running, then you would get an, an exception right here. Then you have the more fun exceptions. This is from your web server. So this is when your request actually reach some web server uh, but it got some code back also. It was not all good. It got a code back that was different than 200. Then you end up in the web client response exception. And here you will get all of the codes. You will, there is something called, you can call the exception dot get status code, then you will get the code. And in this situation right here, we actually expect that we get the 400 back. Um, so just for fun right now, I'm going to use the breakpoints. I've, I've set two breakpoints right here so we can see where we end up. Um, we actually, as we, we expect that we end up here actually, so we should actually also have a fail right here. Um, so it means that we should actually fail right here. We should not assert any spaceships because we want to, uh, we should, we should get a bad request except uh, error. Uh, so that is the return code that we should get from the server. So let us try to run a debug on the ship's bad request. And we ended up down here on the web client response exception. So that is that means that we actually got a response from the from the backend, but um yeah, but it was not two hundred, so that, that that is what it means. So I, I hope you, I hope I answered your question. There was one guy that asked about this: how can you actually, how can you handle the errors from the server, and how can you handle the timeout errors? That was also one. The timeout error there would actually be a client request exception. That is, if you don't have anything at all right there, um, if the web server gives you a bad request, then you will get a four hundred. If you get an internal server error. Uh, then you will get a 500 back. So right now we can actually see here, here's, here are the status co codes. We have a 400, we also, it has a name, and it also has an integer value right here. So that is 
quite cool. And we can also get it right now. The body is empty. Response body, so there's nothing there in empty lists. So, um, so, so we, uh, yeah, but, but that could actually be, um, you could actually also have a body right there. And then you have the status text, bad requests. That is just if you don't want to look up what 400 means yourself, then you can actually see there's a status text right here. And you can, of course, you can also put that in your log files if you want to. So I'm going to minimize this and I press F9. So I continue my, uh, my program. So it continues running. And, um, and that's actually it. So let's go to the, we'll go to the ship's internal server also. Let us just, first we'll just run it without any, um, oh, we should actually add a fail right here. I'll, I'll commit and upload the code to my GitHub account as usual. Um, we should get an internal server error like this. So um, it was actually green. Um, yes, so. Ships internal server error, it's right here. 500 internal server error from, and yes, yes, we are very happy. So that means that we connected, we contacted the, the server, we contacted the endpoint. The, the server just uh, chose to give us an internal server error, or maybe did not choose. If there's an on called exception in Spring Boot, then per default, you will get a 500 internal server error um, returned. Um, of course, you can actually catch these on-call exceptions, and then you can also decide which um, which return codes, HTTP return codes, this should result in. But I'm not going to show you that in this video. I'll create another video uh, on that topic. So here we have internal server. Error. Let us um, let us debug it just so we can see that uh, we have the same uh, properties on the exception uh, as we had on the uh, bad request. And of course, they're not exactly the same because we have uh, now we should get a 500 instead. Status code, oh, status code is right there. Status code 500. We got a status code 500. Web client response exception because it is we reached the server and the server then returned to us a, a, a yeah, there was something, something went wrong in, inside the server. If the server is very nice, then we would also have a, get, gotten a body right here and then the body then. Maybe the body could contain a stack trace unless there's, of course, something secure that you don't want to share with your client. And of course, you should not do that. But sometimes, um, especially in developer environments, maybe you want to return the stack trace to the client. So then you, uh, then your debugging will be uh, will be faster because then the client, instead of just saying it doesn't work when I kind of take, uh, when I connect to your backend to your REST API, then the back then the client can actually say, hey. I get a null pointer exception in in the in the spaceship controller line fifty instead. That is a much more specific error, and then we can go and see that ah, it's because um, it's because there was some null check missing right there, or we maybe we should have used an optional instead. That is you. That is a lot of times actually the case. If you use an optional, then you will not have a null pointer exception. Um, yeah. Okay, so that was the internal show error. I'll, I'll press F nine again so we can continue. What uh, what will I show you as the last one? We have not seen the, we have not seen yet the web client request exception. And how can we trigger that one? That's actually quite easy. Instead of uh, having our Spring Boot uh, or Spring Boot test run uh, spin up in a uh, web context on port 8080, then I can just have it to spin up on port uh, random. I can also just say it should not spin up a web server at all by choosing none right here. Um, so, so now we have chosen a random port. Let us see what happens in our uh, bad request ship right here. And we say debug. Let us see where we end up. Now we end up in the web client request exception. This is interesting, right? This is, it's not no surprise because I spoiled it for you, but uh, it is uh, very interesting, right? So here we can actually see, here we got some, inter here we got uh, this error right here. Method gets so all of these information that we have right now, these are client related. This means that you will not have, uh, you don't have, you did not connect any server. So to any server, so how how would you know anything about the server? You would you did not get anything back from any server because there was no server where you tried to connect to to this uh, yeah yeah to, to this endpoint right here, local host port eighty eighty. There's nothing there right now because the um, the application actually runs on a different port, and if, if we can actually find out at which port it is, if we want to, um, I, I can just press F9 right here. But let, let us just uh, let us just look at the exception a bit before we do that. Actually, so here we have the exception connection refused. 
So this is also why if you go and search Stack Overflow for connection in reviews, you will never find your the you will never find the the answer to your, to your problem because this it 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 simply just have it just means that the the server that you're trying to connect to is not there. So of course, okay, that is also a solution. That is also an answer, but that means that the, what whatever you try whatever you try to connect to, it is not there. You cannot connect to it uh, network wise. It that means that the server is not up, or you are, or your network is not uh, has has a firewall somewhere that blocks you for con yeah for, from 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 connecting um, to that to that uh, IP plus uh, plus port right there. Okay, so you, there's not much we get here. We get the URL, we get the methods, and then we just get a an angry uh, connects uh, connection refused message. And the stack trace, it will just lead us to this line that we have right here. So th there's no fun in that. So let us just press F9 and then we continue. And then we can actually see, uh, you can actually see on your startup block, which uh, port that was actually used. This is actually because we initialized post zero. So our application was actually running on, oh, uh, was it? Oh, sorry, it's not zero. It's 54304. There, the beginning, all of the, the the lower number ports are actually used by your operating system, so it, uh, it will probably never be zero. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, but we are using 50, uh, 54,305. That was the port that the that our application was actually running on. If you want the port, of course, it is very easy. You can just annotate. You will just have an entity right here. Um, real ports, and then you can annotate that with local port, local server port. So now you now you actually have that port, and of course you could use that port uh, to to connect to the real thing. But usually, actually, usually you would um, usually you would have these HTTP um, the, these HTTP client these the, these client right here. They, they know where they want to connect to. Um, yeah, because that is what you define in the configuration. Of course, you would have different uh, you would have different properties. You would use property files, and you would, of course you would have one per environment. Um, I've made another video about configuration um, that you can watch if you don't know how, don't know how to set up uh, a, a Spring Boot application with multiple environments. Thank you very much. This is actually what I want to show you. Um, thank you very much, and thank you very much for all of your comments. I always get in such a good mood when I read your comments. Uh, there are so many positive uh, people out there. Thank you very much for that, and um, have a great evening, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.